Now call to order the October 20th, 2016 regular town board meeting. Visitors are invited to join us to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilwoman Barnum. She's parking. Park. She'll okay. be here. Councilwoman Hush Murray. Here. Councilman Pertico. Here. Councilman Weiner. Here. Supervisor Seely. Here. And attorney for the town. Here. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, oh, come on. It's a better evening than that. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. There's no parking. <laughs> It's okay. It's a good excuse. Excuse us for the parking. Uh, our library um, is hosting its Halloween trick or treating for our uh, youngsters, and um, it underscores the uh, ongoing issue which we're addressing to create more parking. So uh, it, uh, it's always nice to have the need highlighted, and we continue to work towards that. Uh, we have a, a pretty full agenda tonight. However, we have some ceremonial items. First off, I'll note we're going to divert from the posted agenda slightly, just in the. Uh, actual um, pre-meeting um, activities, mainly because of the placement of the podium. Um, but first and foremost, uh, last week, uh, I'll just note that I had the honor of and, and pleasure of presenting to the board a tentative 2017 uh, budget proposal. Um, state law requires us to call it tentative. It's really the supervisor's budget that he develops with department heads and staff. Um, I'm happy to say there'll be no tax increase in Aronicoit and that our long-term fiscal outlook, outlook is strong, so we will continue that trend. Uh, we will be increasing police, doubling our budget for road paving, and making much-needed improvements to our parks, playgrounds, and neighborhoods. A uh, hearing on the budget will be held um, Thursday evening, November 10th, here in the Broderick Room at Town Hall. You might have driven up Titus Avenue and seen some uh, significant improvements taking place to the old uh, uh, break wall. Um, we're replacing that break wall with a beautiful stone wall um, and uh, thankfully adding uh, some sidewalks. Uh, that will connect uh, really the Titus Cooper neighborhood to uh, Town Hall so that uh, you know pedestrians don't have to cross the street twice. We love sidewalks. We always look to place them um, throughout town in order to keep our uh, children and pedestrians safe. And so that's good news for the uh, town. Our library continues to win praise from independent eyes. Uh, next month, the Commercial Real Estate Development Association will recognize the Library for Excellence in Design. Passero Associates, who served as the town's architect on the project, will be recognized. And I'm actually proud to say that Councilman Peter Weiner, before he was councilman, was the lead architect on the project. So congrats to Peter, to Passero, and the entire uh, library family for that. I'm sad to say that tonight is the last night of the farmer's market. We had a really banner year, I think record attendance. I'll note it rained the first and last night of farmer's market, and every Thursday in between was perfect, so we'll take it. It's better than that than the other way around. Thank you to all of our volunteers, vendors, who make that such a spectacular Thursday evening. Um, this coming Saturday, the Aronicoit Police Department will host an autism awareness event from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. I know Chief Tantillo and the IPD is very forward thinking on this issue. Just uh, today, in fact, I received notes from two area parents regarding um, how our uh, police conducted themselves in handling um, uh, children with special needs. And um, it certainly uh, uh, speaks to the, uh, the focus that Chief puts on that in the department. Um, on October 29th, something near and dear to my heart, the town will be hosting its first ever fall invigorate around a quite event. We do this in the spring, we're going to do it in the fall, particularly to help our seniors with their fall yard cleanup. We're calling it raking a difference. I didn't think of that, but it's very clever. Uh, <laughs> what we're doing is we're enlisting volunteers to go rake the lawns of some of our older residents. It's an ambitious effort, so I'm sounding the call for volunteers. We've had good response thus far, and uh, I hope that volunteer list continues. It's a very uh, uh, well, very good way to spend a couple hours on a Saturday. That's the 29th from 9 a.m. to the early afternoon, and we'll start here at Town Hall. If you are interested in helping out, you can call 336-6029 or email invigorate at aronicway.org. Um, Saturday, November 5th. Uh, will mark the opening day of the reservations for Camp Eastman Cabins and Lodges for 2017. Uh, this will actually take place in the first floor conference room of Town Hall. This is the closest thing our Parks Bureau has to Black Friday because every year rise in demand for the cabins uh, seems to mount and the demand on that particular Saturday, uh, you have people really out through the door. So make sure you get down here uh, to, on, to Town Hall on Saturday, November 5th from 9 a.m. to noon. 
And finally, I'll note that town offices will be closed November 11th in observance of Veterans Day. That's a Friday, I believe. We will have our annual Veterans Day observance ceremony at 10.45 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial outside of Town Hall, which, as always, is sponsored by our friends at the American Legion. And now I will ask the uh, town board to join me down near or around the podium as we uh, present our Good Neighbor Awards, then a proclamation, and then we'll have the pleasure of swearing in two new police officers. Board members, please join me. So for those of you who don't know, the Good Neighbor Award was something that was started by my predecessor, Adam Bellow, really in an effort to highlight the good in Irondequoit, um, that which makes us a wonderful town. And, you know, sometimes we take for granted the amazing things that our residents do, whether it's a one-time event or whether it's something they do every day and the selflessness they exhibit. So we feel it uh, appropriate to give out this award from time to time. And I'm happy to say we have two award uh, awardees tonight. And uh, I'll start with the first one. Um, our Good Neighbor Award goes to someone who I feel lives by the, that mantra on a daily basis, that of a good neighbor. Every time Patrick Walker has shown up to work at the Hudson Avenue Wegmans for the past 20 years, he has embodied what it means to be a good neighbor, or as Wegman calls it, a helping hand. Most shoppers at the store know Patrick well. In many ways, Wegmans would not be the same store without Patrick's kindness, hard work, and willingness to help others. He has received far too many customer compliments to quantify. He helps shovel out both customers' and employees' cars out of the snow. Patrick never shies away from asking any customer if they need help and knows many of them by their first name. And I'm sure many of you who shop at the uh, Hudson Avenue Wegmans know Patrick well. I actually got to know Patrick as a teenager as he served as an assistant coach for our baseball team. If there's one thing that exceeds Patrick's passion for helping others, it's his encyclopedic knowledge of baseball history and trivia. People like Patrick are the reason that Wegmans is such a successful company. People like Patrick are the reason Aronicoit is such a wonderful town. It is my pleasure to honor Patrick Walker with the Aronicoit Good Neighbor Award. Patrick, would you please come up? Patrick informs, informs me that Cleveland is going to win the World Series. <laughs> now, one more time, a round of applause, Patrick Walker. Um, I'll ask uh, is, uh, our Assembly Majority Leader Morelli here. Joe, would you mind joining us up here for this next one? Um, this one recognizes a, a very good resident uh, for something exceptional he did uh, a little while ago. He's a great person overall, but uh, what he did a few months ago warrants uh, the, this award. Um, on May, excuse me, on August 3rd, 2016, Irondequoit police units were dispatched to an address on Glen Cove Rise for the report of two males fighting, one male being in his early 20s and the other male about 70 years old. Upon the arrival of IPD officers, it was learned that the young male suspect was having an argument with a female in the area when a neighbor intervened in the argument. It was at that time the young male attacked the neighbor and threw him, on the, threw him down on a set of concrete steps. The young male suspect then got on top of this now injured victim and began to viciously attack him by punching him in the head and face. When Mo Alemo observed this, he immediately went to the aid of his neighbor, yelling for the suspect to stop the attack it was at this point that a young, the young male then began to attack Mr. Lamo as well, punching him in the face. Mr. Lamo was able to wrestle the suspect to the ground during the attack, but the male suspect fled prior to police arrival. A short time later, IPD officers were able to locate the suspect, and Mo did positively identify uh, the suspect. Because of his willingness to help his neighbor and save him from potential serious injury, I'm proud to honor Mo Lamo with the Irondequoit Good Neighbor Award. Mo. Uh, 
And uh, I, know, I know the assembly is going to honor you as well, so I want to give uh, uh, Majority Leader Morelli an opportunity to say some words, because he's known you longer than I have. Thank you. Uh, first of all, to uh, the supervisor and the members of the town board, I think this is a, a great opportunity to welcome and, uh, and thank people in this community for their outstanding service. And congratulations, Patrick, to you. I'm not sure I believe the Indians will win, but you never know. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, but I, uh, I do appreciate the supervisor giving me an opportunity. I've, I've known Mo for, well, longer than Mo and I would probably care to admit. And um, he is a... Uh, you know, you, you get to see Mo and his gang. I see some of them here. <laughs> they know who they are. Uh, every morning for breakfast, um, and they're solving the problems of the world. But Mo is one of the most decent, uh, honorable people I've ever met in my life. One of the funniest, too, uh, once you get to understand his sense of humor. But, um, but he is a fixture in this community, uh, an extraordinary individual who gives time and time again to the people in this community. I see his beautiful wife, Carmen, there. Uh, who's the better half. Um, but uh, Mo has been a dear friend, and I was supposed to be out of town today, and when I uh, learned that uh, the town board was honoring him, I changed my plans to be here because he's such an extraordinary friend, such a gift to this community. Uh, and his act of bravery, uh, not worrying about his own uh, physical uh, well-being, but intervening because that's, uh, that's Mo. If you know him, that's the kind of thing he does. So I wanted to make sure that I was a part of this. I appreciate the supervisor giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, and I just want to say, Mo, you're, you're the best, brother. I love you. I'll note the gentleman who just come up is, is Walt, and uh, Walt was the other person who uh, exhibited bravery, and, and Mo uh, was able to save from the attack. Uh, so anyone else you want to bring up, Mo, or are we good? <laughs> Makes you feel good to be a resident of the town, doesn't it? Yes. Um, yes. Um, and it's important that we recognize these things because sometimes we never take them for granted. But sometimes, yes, sir. May I make a Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, Mo did a great job that day. Uh, I also want you to know that I'm a proud Marine Corps veteran, and and uh, I'm a proud member. Of, of a rendezvous and being able to attend this meeting and have this openness and this caring and and awarding somebody who did a great job like this really makes me feel good as an American very very well said um we have some uh, members from the Friends of the Library who I'd like to invite up right now. Um, it, it goes without saying that the library has been an amazing addition to the town, and that's one of the reasons you had difficulty parking tonight is because it's such a draw for the community, not just for what the traditional library activities, but so many other things that can bring a community together, even trick-or-treating for our littlest ones. Um, we're, it's my pleasure to award this proclamation to the Friends of the Library, who are an outstanding group. Um, they're a group, um, part of the coalition that really drove the effort to build the library. I say they are the, uh, the heart and soul, so to speak, because um, they give up so much of their time and effort uh, to make that place successful. And even after it's opened up, you know, they could have spiked the football in the end zone and, and, and walked off in the distance, but it seems like their resolve and their tenacity has only uh, increased significantly since it's opened up. And uh, we wouldn't be able to do everything we, we, can't, we do over there without their effort. So it's my pleasure to present this proclamation. I'll read it in a truncated uh, uh, 
uh, form. Uh, whereas a great community is only as great as those organizations that perform exemplary service on behalf of their neighbors through successful outreach and raising awareness impacting the fabric of our great community. Whereas the Friends of the Ironicoi Public Library is one such charitable organization deserving of our recognition and praise, especially in the light of our newly constructed, centralized, and modernized public library. Whereas the Friends appreciate the importance of upgrading and centralizing our new library and worked feverishly to inform residents, advocate for resources, and help the town reach our goals. Whereas United for Libraries and Friends groups across the entire nation are celebrating the 11th annual Friends of Libraries Week and declaring October 16th through October 22nd, 2016 to be Friends of the Libraries Week, a time when we celebrate the dedication exhibited by those volunteers and champions of our community. Therefore, let it be resolved that we, Supervisor Dave Seely and the town board on behalf of the entire town of Aranaquai do hereby proclaim October 16th through October 22nd, 2016, Friends of Libraries Week in Aranaquai and do offer our support and gratitude for all they do to enhance our library. So present. <laughs> I just want to thank Supervisor Seeley and the town board for this proclamation. As many of you probably know, um, this is, we're an all-volunteer independent organization whose mission is to advocate and raise money to sponsor programs other and otherwise assist the library. We're successful because of the continued support of our 460 member organization, People of Arundaquite and the library and town officials. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask uh, Chief Tantillo to come up here, and I'll, I'll ask my town board members to stay down here. I, mean, I think it's cause it's appropriate you're down here for this. Um, you know, I, since I, I joined the board, I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing um, uh, several new officers sworn in to our police department. And um, uh, one thing we've we've done as a board is reaffirm our commitment to the department. And I'm happy to say we've had two young men go through academy, and um, Tonight, it's my pleasure that they will be sworn in as Aranaquite police officers. I, on Friday, I had the pleasure of attending the Academy graduation, and it was a wonderful event. Um, it makes you really reflect and think about uh, who these men and women are and what they do for our community. And tonight, it's, it's the town's turn to recognize that and formally welcome them to the job. Chief Tantel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. We certainly do appreciate the support of the Aranaquai Town Board in filling the vacancies that exist within the Aranaquai Police Department. And tonight, as the supervisor mentioned, is the culmination of that uh, support and training. If I could have Dean Kay come forward, please, as well as his family. Oh, yeah. It's a family event. Oh, sure. This is a day that you'll remember for a lifetime. Right up here. If I may, uh, Dean is a graduate of Bishop Kearney and has attended Monroe Community College. He's worked as a police cadet prior to his employment with us. Uh, he has successfully completed the Monroe County Police Academy, and during his uh, attendance and participation in that training, he assumed a leadership role within his recruit class. He is currently assigned to the 1st Platoon and works everyone's favorite hours from 9.45 p.m. until 5.45 a.m. <laughs> The other left. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Dean K, do solemnly swear. I, Dean K, do solemnly swear that I will defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will defend the Constitution of the United States and of the State of New York. And of the State of New York. I will enforce all of the laws. I will enforce all of the laws of the State of New York. And the town of Aranaquite. 
I will fulfill the duties, fulfill the duties of, the of the rank of police officer to the best of my ability. I will serve, protect, and guide the citizens of the town of Aranaquait. I will obey all orders, rules, and regulations Orders, rules, and regulations. <laughs> Orders, rules, and regulations. Of the Aranaquai Police Department. Of the Police Department. Officer K, congratulations. So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thanks to all my family. It's been a lifelong dream of mine since I could ever talk. I always wanted to be a police officer. Um, very lucky. I grew up in this town. Now I get to serve it. I always wanted to work in Aranaquoit. I thought I was going to have to start in the city or out of state or somewhere and transfer in. But luckily, Chief Tantillo gave me the great opportunity to start my career in Aranaquoit. And I plan on spending my entire career here. So thank you all for coming. And next, if I could have Dominic Pronte come forward, along with his family, please. Who's holding the Bible? Uh, Dominic is a graduate of Eastridge High School. He attended MCC as well, has previously worked with our Department of Public Works and was an exceptional employee there. He also successfully completed the Munner County Police Academy and assumed a leadership role within the recruit class. And at our graduation, I was very proud to see that both of our Arundaquite recruit officers had achieved that objective and goal. He also is currently assigned to everyone's favorite shift. <laughs> and is working from 9.45 p.m. to 5.45 a.m. You'll have a little time to celebrate after this, I promise. All right. Okay, you're going to place your left hand on the Bible and please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Dominic Pronti, I, Dominic Pronti do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will defend the Constitution of the United States and of the State of New York. I will enforce all of the laws of the state of New York, of the state of New York and, the town of and the town of Aranaquite. I will fulfill the duties of the rank of police officer to the best of my ability. I will serve, protect, and guide the citizens of the town of Aranaquite. I will obey all orders, rules, and regulations of the Aranaquite Police Department. Officer Pronti, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Again, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I spent my whole life here as well, growing up here. Um, it's always been my dream to be an Aranaquai police officer, and uh, finally it's coming true. I would just like to thank a few people. Um, first off, Chief Tantillo for giving me this opportunity, Town Supervisor Dave Seely, the Town Board, and County Clerk Adam Bello, who was Town Supervisor at the time. Uh, just everybody, thank you for coming. I want to thank my parents and my family for being there especially over the last year while I went through the police academy, finished my FTO. So uh, again, thank you for coming and thank you for this opportunity. So if I could just have uh, Dean and Dominic follow me over to the town clerk so that it's all official. So uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh,
For those of you who came for the pre-meeting festivities, we won't be offended if you leave. Uh, I will say, though, one, one thing we do have, we have a number of uh, residents who've signed up for public input um, in, in respect to them and uh, to allow us to conduct the uh, business of the meeting. I ask that you try and uh, minimize the chatter outside. It does seep into here, but uh, certainly celebrate these great uh, um, moments that we've been able to uh, make a part of the meeting. I know. Oh, I know. It took him on. Um, Don. Don Prime. He's been with the county forever. policeman, his grandfather, and today's his birthday. He got sworn in on my dad's birthday. He's got his old badge, because my dad was a cop, too. He told me he's got his badge in his pocket. That's precious. That's a really great story for them. Paper or something. Oh, my gosh. That is really neat. Oh, John. How touching. I know. Love that. Bye. Tell him you live there. Yeah. Little Marine That's took him on, didn't he? Beautiful area over there. Most yeah. thing, he yeah, fought I'm the neighbor. Very, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. No, I tell you what. It's terrifying. Yeah. Talk Jeez. about brave. Okay. I know what a brave Ideal. guy. I do okay. a lot of historic preservation work, design work. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, one of, the, uh, one of the realities is we can't shut the doors because we have open meetings. So, uh, um, it's actually not bad. Okay, we're going to start public input. We have a number of individuals signed up, some of whom I believe just signed in for the, uh, the pre-meeting festivities. But um, nevertheless, I'll read through the entire list, and when you come up, please state your name and your address. Uh, is Terry, Terry from the library? Terry Dalton? She's leaving, okay. She's right there. In the I don't think she will. Uh, Frank uh, Cartarpo and... Carmen Chapman, I think, are here for Mo, as is Sam Alamo. Um, Bob Fortuna, I believe, is here for more. Bob Fortuna? Okay, they signed in anyway. That's nice. We know where they live now. Um, uh, Judy Smith, 174 Oak Ridge. Hi, Ms. Smith. How are you? And we, we can hear you, so don't worry about the, the chatter, but you can come up to the podium. Yep, podium. Yes. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. My name is Judy Smith, and I've lived at 174 Oak Ridge Drive. Miss, actually, one favorite, the mic Just moves. pull the mic yeah. down, thank you. There you go. I'm taller than you, so. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, I've lived at 174 Oak Ridge Drive for 26 years, and I grew up on Thistledown Drive also in Irondequoit. Um, I am a mother, a grandmother, and a nurse. And I'm hoping that the town of Irondequoit can help us with an overall safety issue on Oak Ridge Drive, which is increased traffic volume and speed with many reckless instances that have unfortunately not been captured on monitoring devices. Sidewalks um, have been put under consideration 
but I think that this would cause the town a large expense, which could be used for many other town projects and potentially could cause a big problem with damage to existing leach lines for our septic tanks. Other concerns are potential environmental damage to trees, driveway integrity, and infringement of privacy on small yards. I think that the overall safety issue for bikers, runners, skateboarders, and walkers would be better served by increased police presence, stop signs at each end of Tyringham Road, which has become a drag race cut through road, um, and signage for pedestrians and deer, and most importantly, speed humps and speed bumps, which have been beneficial in many other areas. These measures would cost less and do more. And I thank you very much for your time and your efforts. And I sincerely hope that you can help us with our overall safety issues on Oak Ridge. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Um, next up to speak, uh, we have Michael Costello, 183 Dewberry Drive. Forgive me if I pronounce your last name incorrectly. Good evening. Uh, Michael Costello, 183 Dewberry Drive. I'm here to reiterate concerns that I raised at a um, zoning meeting last month about the development at uh, on Culver Road on either side of Culver Road by Providence Housing. Uh, pretty soon the Bay Bridge will be uh, um, open for traffic from Webster and there'll be a sizable increase of traffic on Culver Road. And again, it'll be a challenge to pull out a, dr a Dewberry Drive onto Culver Road and I'm anticipating uh, with the development that uh, apparently is going to pass through the zoning board uh, by Providence Housing that there'll be increased traffic on Dewberry Drive trying to exit on Culver Road. And I don't know if this is the proper form to, to raise a concern about the traffic flow and, and putting possibly a light in at that juncture. Perhaps the uh, county would be more appropriate, I don't know. Uh, we can uh, get back to you on that, sir. Okay. Commissioner Kyle, can you make a note of that? Thank you. But uh, as I said back in September, if the buildings are built and and uh, people are living on either side of Culver Road, I'm sure many of them will know each other. And they'll want to go back and forth to different community rooms. And so the, the pedestrian traffic will increase there as well. Uh, right now, uh, you would take your life in your hands trying to cross in that crosswalk because there's a rise coming from the north to the south. There's a rise about where the the uh, building on the east side will be, and cars come over that rise and just zoom down through that depression where the juncture of the roads are. And so I, I'm anticipating a very dangerous situation that could be remedied by some uh, traffic flow concerns there. The uh, second item I also raised in September was uh, this, the <laughs> beautiful bell tower. It belonged to the United Church of Christ. It is uh, slated for demolition. Uh, I wrote a little letter to the editor that went into the, into the town paper. And uh, what I said in there is that I believe a structure such as this uh, uh, speaks to a higher uh, place in, in our psyche, in our minds, and that when you have such a monument, that, that any efforts that you could raise to preserve it would be well spent. If you look closely at this photograph, you'll notice that the, uh, the uh, front section, which goes out to Culver Road, of this building was a later addition. So there's already been a, a, a precedent of adding on something to the bell tower and a smaller building that was on the side of it. So I don't know if that's architecturally 
means anything or not, but uh, and if it was done once before, if the new building were built out in this area here, it could also be attached in some way to that bell tower. So, um, at the last meeting I attended here, the statement was made that it has no, the tower has no historical significance, and I'm not concerned about the history. I'm concerned about the spiritual significance. There are two uh, churches that s have ceased to exist in that section of Arundaquite, <coughs> and uh, through no fault of their own, two, uh, two groups, two congregations have lost a place where they uh, met for uh, years, one, one for 100 and almost 110 years, and the other for 80 years. And they willingly, uh, well, not all of them were so willing, but <laughs> they gave up those, those spaces and uh, this town, the town has approved uh, the building of, or I believe tonight is going to approve the rezoning of that uh, area for the building of senior housing. And I think it would be nice to have some reminder of what those spaces uh, once were. And it's a, there's nothing on the tower to denote that it's of any particular um, religion. It's just a, a reminder of the uh, spiritual significance of that area. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, next up is, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce the last name, Sue Gunktonek, Gunk, 42 uh, Oak Ridge. Forgive me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please say your name so I can correct myself. Hi, my name is Sue Gutnacht, and I'm at 42 Oak Ridge. Um, I'm here tonight out of concern for my street. Um, I've heard and talked to people from the town on the street regarding sidewalks, and we were told that they may be coming to our street. Um, my husband and I spent about seven years uh, looking for a house, just the right house, in just the right neighborhood, and we found it on Oak Ridge. We love the curving, tree-lined street. We love the quiet atmosphere. We are not blind to the fact that cars go so quickly down our street, and too quickly sometimes. We do not feel that sidewalks will address that issue. As a matter of fact, we see sidewalks as a reason for cars to go faster. We do have questions and concerns regarding the placement of the sidewalks. Our street was not designed for them originally, so putting them in would cost a great deal more than on many other streets. There are hazards. There are septic systems. There are leach fields that all need to be dealt with. Um, and we would like to know who would be responsible for the costs and damages that arise from machinery going over leach fields. Um, who would, I, I would like to, an answer before that is voted on. I, I would like to hear who will be responsible for that. Um, it, it originally was slated to go on the west side of the street. Now we hear it's on the east side of the street. It sounds to us like it might be a done deal without discussing it with most of the members on the street. I hope not. Our concerns have not all been addressed. Have you considered the cheaper and less intrusive alternative of speed humps? It's a simpler alternative. It would cut down both on traffic and speeding. Um, the number of trees that would have to come down keeps changing. Um, I don't want Oak Ridge Drive to say welcome to Greece. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Jeff Consul, 126 Oak Ridge. Good evening, Mr. Consul. Good evening, uh, Mr. Supervisor and the town board. Um, without echoing all the previous, my previous neighbors who have come up, um, I'm concerned about the sidewalks and mostly what I want to encourage the town to do is communicate a little, you communi have provide better communication back and forth between the residents of Oak Ridge Drive and the town to keep us in the loop on what's going on what you're finding, and what contingencies are. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe sidewalks are the answers as previously stated by my neighbors. Uh, I am concerned about the speed, and uh, it continues to be a problem. And now with the, the athletic fields that are going to be constructed down at Camp Eastman, the likelihood of traffic cutting down through Oak Ridge <clears throat> in the future is going to be even greater which is causing a lot of the neighbors to be even more concerned that there's going to be speeding traffic through the neighborhood and, and a higher volume of it. So I think that 
looking into and investigating putting in speed humps uh, to help manage the traffic flow and the speed is a, is a good solution. And we're just looking for your help to kind of go forward with this and also as far as the sidewalks just ask for communication and keep the keep the residents more in the loop and um, you know when there, the time comes to vote on this we'd like to be have a voice in this too of course thank you, thank you mr. council next up uh, Terry Carter 99 Oak Ridge evening mr. Carter doing? I'm well thank you Terry Carter 99 Oak Ridge retrofitting um, this past weekend I was in Ithaca um, it's a very busy university town with a lot of vehicle traffic and a lot of pedestrian traffic. Extensive use is made of speed humps and residents that we spoke to said speeding was not a problem and pedestrians felt safe and this was both students and, and senior citizens. We actually uh, were on a couple of streets that had speed humps that didn't have sidewalks. The area of Oak Ridge Drive being considered for sidewalks was not designed with sidewalks in mind, so we will be retrofitting a solution which does not really fit. Uh, retrofitting is um, by nature complex, not easy to do, and usually costs more than the initial estimate. It's an invasive solution is what we're looking at. No matter what approach we take, it will be difficult and disruptive, the proverbial square peg in a round hole. Many residents, including me, bought their houses because of the character of the area, including no sidewalks. And I agree with the other speakers that speed humps appear to be a very good and low-cost option to provide at least an initial non-invasive solution. About three weeks ago, I got home after work and saw orange paint markers on the street. I found that the metal pins marking the front of my lot had been exposed and pink tape put on them. Um, one explanation could be that the town is trying to see if a meandering path on the west side will reduce the number of trees cut down and hence we can move the path to the west side. Um, if that is the case, residents should be made aware. Um, there's been concerns about transparency since this whole issue began. Um, between the two trees, the two town trees that were going to be cut down in the original plan, because I saw it when the guy brought <coughs> the plan around um, and my lot line, you can just about squeeze a sidewalk in, which is why I ask the question. <coughs> Finally, in the 36 years now that I have been initially jogging, but for a lot of years now <laughs> walking uh, my exercise routes, which involve a lot of Oak Ridge Drive, I have never once had to get out of the way quickly, and I have never once in 36 years been in a situation on Oak Ridge Drive where if I had to, I couldn't exit quickly. Walk the street, you can get out of danger. But, as everybody said, we do need to do something to reduce the traffic and to reduce the speed. And if we make it inconvenient for through traffic with extra stop signs and speed humps, that will reduce it. And if we make it more damaging to cars with speed humps, that will also do it. It works elsewhere. I think it can work for us. Thank you for your time and attention. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, next up, we have Jennifer Ike, uh, 494 Oak Ridge. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Ike. I live at 494 Oak Ridge Drive. The 49 homes on the east side of Oak Ridge Drive that do not have a sidewalk currently have septic. If you do not own a septic, let me share, it's about $10,000 to put in a leach field. That means burying that money in your front yard. Um, we watch daily what goes down our drain. We treat it monthly and we have to have it pumped regularly. And then we cross our fingers and hope it works. When we found that we all agreed that Oak Ridge Drive has a speed problem and we understood that you were thinking of sidewalks as a solution, I wanted to be informed, so I contacted three septic companies and asked them, would this interfere at all with my septics? The first company wanted me to, to warn you that any machine, even many machines, placed in my yard had the possibility of crushing my leach lines. My leach lines were placed in 1952, and yes, they exceed and go right down to the street. I asked him, how will I know that something's been damaged? 
Well, we would find that because our system would, ru would run slowly and we'd probably have pooling of water near the sidewalks. The cost, he predicted, if this happens, is anywhere to the homeowners between $2,000 and $10,000. The second company was a little more favorable. They said, don't worry, you have sand and all of your homes are so far away from the street. And yet, if you walk our street, you'll know not all of our homes are that far. And sadly, again, I'm back a ways and yet my leech lines go right down to the street almost. I am concerned and I hope you are too. This is our investment. We have a problem. We need your help solving it. And yet, please consider our investment when doing so. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ike. Next up, uh, Christopher Burns, 90 Canary. Mr. Burns, good evening. Mr. Supervisor, good evening to you. And thank you for the good news that our tax rate is staying flat. I am here to talk a little bit about uh, communications between the town and its residents. That continues to be an opportunity area. Uh, specifically, the uh, reassessment form letters that were mailed out to each of the residents in town. As a candidate for town supervisor, I've been out talking with people, and that's been probably the source of the greatest confusion, those letters. And uh, unfortunately, the opportunity was missed to include a business reply mail envelope so that folks could mail the envelopes back. And of course, with business reply mail, the town doesn't get charged unless people actually mail it back, which we want to encourage them to do. But the bigger issue, the confusion that folks have had with that letter, on the one hand, is because they didn't fully understand its purpose. The description in the letter and, say, the information on the town's website is very terse about what's happening and why it's happening. And a lot of people that I've talked to understand that while the tax rate across the town on a macro level is staying flat, and that's good news, on a micro level, People are concerned. They understand that, you know, there's a give and take of assessments. Some people's assessments will go down and they'll pay less taxes. Some will go up and they'll pay more. A lot of the people I've talked to are afraid that they're going to be the ones whose assessments go up. So they're reluctant to send back the form, especially because they don't understand what's being asked. It would have been great if there had been some additional information to help homeowners understand some of the terminology and key things being asked for in that letter. Like, what style of home do you have? Not everyone can articulate the difference between a ranch and a Tudor and a Cape Cod and a Colonial. Or if you're like me, you've got a Cape Cod Colonial. It would be helpful to understand what those differences are so that people, I think, generally, who want to be forthcoming with that information and help the town out can really do that. The question that I've gotten that I can't answer, and I Googled it, couldn't find an answer, what's a three-quarter story? You know, things like that that could have been explained along with that letter would have been helpful, but it's not too late. If we add some information, if you guys, if the town in its entirety can add some information to the website to help explain some of these data points, that'll go a long way towards helping people in good faith help the process of reassessment so that everybody has got an accurate assessment and it's a way to, I think it's not too late to build some goodwill and say, hey, we understand this is perhaps a process that will bring some gnashing of teeth but we're in this together and we want to make it as easy as possible for everyone. So that's a suggestion. Please take it with a grain of salt. On the topic of the sidewalks in uh, the Oak Ridge neighborhood, I guess I just want to go on record as saying that sounds like a, so a solution in search of a problem. I think there's a problem that's been well documented that is in search of the right solution for that neighborhood. So I hope that, you know, in a sense, we'll call time out on the sidewalks and say, are we really moving in the right direction? Folks, thanks very much. Have a great night. Thank you, Mr. Burns. And now, uh, Greg Devlin. Mr. Devlin, as you're walking up, I'm going to, no, come on up. <laughs> You'd be happy to know, uh, uh, I haven't, we haven't formalized this yet, but we're inclined to change our meetings back to uh, Tuesday next year. And I know that's something you had suggested. I'd like to think that like, had something I to do with I think you had everything to do with it. So <laughs> you're a man who we listen to. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, first, I wanted to mention the Good Neighbor Rewards. I, I said it to Supervisor Bell. I'll say it again. I think it's a great thing. and. Uh, I am humbled by Mo's actions, and I only hope that if someday I was met with the same situation, I would act the same way. And uh, that's, that's a, a tough call. Sidewalks. Um, back in June, we had a meeting here. It was the first time we knew about this issue and stuff. And I think you had an overwhelming response to that letter, and there was a tremendous outcry about the safety on the street and certainly a big pushback on the sidewalks. And then we received a letter uh, dated July 5th, 
in which um, you thanked us for our participation at that meeting and you said, I have directed town staff to visit every potentially impacted residence on the east side to better understand each property specifically with respect to the location of septic systems and leach field pipes. Uh, we haven't heard from anybody yet and I don't know why. They've been on the street and they're so completing what? that work so. Well, we haven't heard. Well, okay. I in, oh, let me put it right. I interpreted this letter as being that you're actually going to speak to the residents, and that yes. hasn't happened. No, we are. That's our intention to speak to every resident. Okay, well, that, if we have to good, go through three, ten times, we will speak to every resident on that side. Okay, it hasn't happened, but sidewalks do not stop speed. They just will not do that. And we received information also about how we've had the speed trailer monitoring speed and taking uh, taking records and said we were recorded as having an average of 27 miles an hour on our street and it was placed in front of houses where it could be very easily seen but two things one is they said we have an average of 27 miles an hour the speed limit is 25 and so which means you have a lot of cars that are going into and out of driveways in the area of that that are going much slower than that but you also have a lot of cars that are going much higher than that speed so I think that's a very bad statistic, but it also tells you that everybody's speeding. You come right down to it. It's, it's a problem. But when I look at the sidewalks and look at what you want to do, and I look at what the town is doing infrastructure-wise, and now we have built, uh, we have the new, the new ballpark complex. You have on the agenda for tonight uh, dugouts and concession stands. I thought it very interesting that you X'd out the cost of that um, on, in, the, in the information there. Uh, we have uh, soccer fields are going to be built at Camp Eastman. Um, sidewalks also. This is all infrastructure. And even if you have grants to pay for the infrastructure, that infrastructure has to be maintained. <coughs> and I would like to read one thing that I found on the website, and it says, on the Aronicoit's website, it says there are over 200 miles of sidewalks in the town of Aronicoit. Each year, the Department of Public Works replaces cracked, heaved, or deteriorated sidewalks in a handful of neighborhoods. Limited resources make it difficult to keep up with aging infrastructure. If we don't have the resources to keep up with the existing aging infrastructure, how can you add more infrastructure that has to be maintained as well? It's not good fiscal policy, I don't think. So I'd like to see you, uh, as so many others said, Let's table the sidewalks. Let's go for something that makes a lot more sense and would do a lot more good for the neighborhood. Thank you, as always, Mr. Devlin. Thank you. I appreciate the meeting change. Uh, not final yet. It's my board has to approve it. i got to convince them as well. Uh, <laughs> Marty Francioni, 495 Oak Ridge. Evening, sir. Uh, my name is Marty Fashoni, uh, 495 Oak Ridge. Uh, we lived there for about 10 years, and I'm here to talk about the issue on Oak Ridge of the speed and all that. Um, I don't want to cover a, a lot of th topics have been covered about the, the sidewalk issue and the speed on the street, um, the septic tanks, the cost of, of maintenance, uh, the, the impact of the neighborhood by cutting down the trees and all these things. Um, I want to take a so all that's been t spoken to. I want to talk to something a little different. Um, this has become a very divisive, divisive, divisive issue on our street. Um, some people really want a sidewalk, and they think, how dare you put the value of a tree above the value of my little kid in a stroller who will certainly get squished by a car when, if, we, if we don't have a sidewalk. And as you've heard, there's a lot of people that, that, don't, that don't want sidewalks. So it's, it's sort of like, you know, the whole street's turning into the sharks and the jets kind of thing. And it's, it's not a good community feel. You know, we want to foster good communities. Oak Ridge is a beautiful street. I want to foster a good community feel. I feel like we go forward with a plan like this, you're, you're going to drive a wedge between people. And I don't think that's what we want to do. Um, as is said uh, several times already tonight, a, a sort of a easier step, a softer step into addressing the issue of speed on the street, because there is an issue of speed on the street, would be things like signage, would be things like speed humps. Um, and, and doing something like that would be a way of bringing people together to, to solve an issue. You know, we have an issue, let's solve that issue, and let's try not to, to irritate anybody on the way. You're never going to make everybody happy, but if you do something like a, a kind of a stronger step, I mean, we like you said, we, you place side at the beginning of this meeting, you place sidewalks where safety is an issue. Well, I 
do agree that safety is an issue and the safety is, is a problem due to the speed of the cars on the street. Let's fix that problem without uh, dividing the people that live on that street into the, the, the pros and the against because then I, I just don't see that ending well for anybody. Um, that's all I got. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Next up, uh, we have Andrea <coughs> Zona, 41 Outlook. Good evening. And of course, that's the last person to sign up, but we have, a, if anyone else wishes to address the board, you're entitled to. Hi, um, I know that I addressed you all at the last meeting about the rezoning. I just wanted to restate and refresh a couple things uh, of my concerns. Um, the area that's put up for rezoning um, is just shy south of the area that you consider commercial in that space. And um, I was thinking about that, but most of those businesses are all like mom and pop, small businesses, and they're not big commercial spaces. And um, this, this complex kind of goes outside of the character of what's already there. Um, I think if it needs to go through, if it goes through, it needs to really be um, enforced that it, it, it's a smaller feel and the three stories is a big concern to me. Every time I look out into my backyard, I have a huge maple tree and I look at the maple tree and realize that that three story building is going to be taller than that maple tree and that maple tree is probably going to be taken down. Um, let's see. Which will again, like I said, I, 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 uh, I'm worried about the privacy that I'm going to lose in my backyard and becoming a fishbowl. And that was the reason for me buying the property in the first place. Now I want to tell you that um, we came into an issue where Mark was going to, they were going to replace the fence. And um, they were going to cut down all the cedar trees. And I reached out to Mark Griesenberger and I have been working with him and he has put a stop to, to doing that. We talked about which trees to take down, so we're preserving some of my, I just wanted to give him, let you know that, he, you know, we're working together now. It's a good thing. Good. Um, and so he's helping out with the cedars in that way. He's also um, said in the next couple weeks he's going to be fixing the fence behind um, the Stubel's house between the complex. Um, and we also talked about parking, and I know the parking was an issue at one point, and it was going to be at a 0.5 ratio, but he has assured me that it's going to be more like a 0.75 or 0.8, which seems much more reasonable. And I guess my, and my other concern is traffic, um, about the traffic that's going out onto the side streets. And I know that doesn't affect me directly, but I do have concern for my neighborhood my neighbors it's like would I want that you know and to have the traffic on that street I think that's really something again if this goes through that really needs to be um, considered upon these small side streets all the traffic going out onto them um, again it won't affect me per se but I worry about just a neighborhood atmosphere turning commercial um, I think that, you know, if everything goes through and Providence does build their buildings, because senior housing is important. I'm not, I, I never said it wasn't. I believe it's important. My thought was always why wouldn't it be put with other commercial buildings? But if it's not, then I guess what needs to be also emphasized is that Providence then is going to have to behave more like a small business in community relations. Um, and I, th I think that would be huge. And it's our, it started, I think it's a good start with Mark working with me on the fence. Um, <coughs> and he's been working with me getting out some of the right information because there's a lot of misinformation that's out there that I've run into. So I'm, now I know right from him certain things and have corrected people on that, which is eases their minds. Um, and I think... I think that's all. Thank you, Mrs. So, Son. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, that's the balance of the list of folks who have signed up. If anyone else wishes to address the board at this time, they're welcome to come to the podium. Going once, going twice, 
Okay, and that concludes public input for the night. I'd, as always, like to thank our residents for the civility they demonstrate when coming, regardless of their uh, viewpoint on an issue. It's very refreshing, and given everything we're seeing at the national level, it's nice that we can have conversations about issues and smile at the end of the day. So thank you very much. Madam Clerk. Uh, we're on to the financial report. Financial report. Madam Comptroller. The 2016 financial results for the town as of the end of September 2016. Total expenditures and encumbrances are $23,854,000, 69.8% of budget, lower than the 75% of the year that has elapsed. The variance is comprised of $22,278,000 of actual expenditures along with $1,576,000 of encumbrances. The encumbrances are reasonable at 4.6% of budget as departments are still committing to supplies, commodities, and services that are needed this year. Expenses in the general fund are 68.8% of budget, $13,772,000 below the percent of the year that has elapsed. The breakdown is the actual expenditures $13,109,000 and encumbrances $663,000. The collective highway funds expenses of $4,040,000 remain higher than the 75% of the year that has elapsed at 76.8%. They, the expenses are now more closely aligned to that percent of the year than in previous months. And that's primarily because we were in position to unencumber a significant portion of the fuel estimate. Gas, fuel, and asphalt are the main causes for the slight increase in Highway 1. In Highway 3, the major contributors are vehicle maintenance, equipment parts, and debt service. <coughs> The library expenses are below budget, 74.3%. Uh, that's close, that's close, it's parallel to the percent of the year that has elapsed. The sewer fund has expended $2,818,000, 65% of budget. The heavy duty dump truck that was previously encumbered is in. Encumbrances still remain for debt service and equipment vehicles, however. In stormwater drainage, the fund is at 55.8% of budget. The dump truck that we had previously encumbered is also in uh, for the drainage fund. As of the end of September, the general fund revenue is $15,691,000, and that equates to 79.6% of budget. And as you, as you uh, can see, that's higher than the percent of the year that has elapsed. The total real estate tax is in, it's been in for uh, several months now since the end of February, uh, $10.6 million. The pilot revenue is all in at $196,000. That's 102% of budget and pilot payment in lieu of tax. Sales tax of $1,478,000 that's, uh, that's shown on the report represents five months of revenue. The mortgage tax is $180,000. That remains unchanged since the first, shortly the first quarter, and that's 25% of budget, and it represents only three months of activity. During September, our per capita state aid of $613,000 was received in full. We also received $373,000 of franchise cable TV revenue, 53.3% of that budget. Recreation <coughs> program fees are currently favorable at 89.2% of budget. The amount collected as of the end of the last month, it was $268,000. The town summary, total town summary after nine months, revenue 
$27.7 million, 84.5% of budget. Real estate tax for all funds, across all funds, $16.5 million. The library fund has received 97.8% of revenue, a sum of $2,238,000. Highway has recorded $4,797,000, 91.4% of revenue in that fund. Sewer has collected 100% of budget, over, excuse me, over 100% of budget, 100.4%, a total of $4.3 million. Because this is the end of the quarter, there's a, a page three uh, listed on this financial report. What that does is compares the prior six years, third quarter from the prior six years to the uh, third quarter this year. And regarding expenditures, the, the total expenditure, the expenditures by fund is on the top third of that page. The percent encumbered and spent range from 67 to 70 percent. This year, the town, town is at 69.8 percent, and that's primarily due to a ban, a uh, bond anticipation note in the library fund and the purchase of heavy-duty dump trucks in sewer and in drainage. The middle third of the page uh, contains the pertinent sources of revenue for the general fund. <coughs> Excuse me. And the bottom third of the page shows the revenue trend of the other funds. The last line shows the total town revenue trend. In the middle of the page, the revenues for the general fund range from 76 to 81 percent. The, the revenue for 2016 is at the upper end of the range at 79.6 percent. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and that's attributable, attributable to sales tax and recreation program fees. The revenue for the town as a whole on the bottom line trends from 83 to 91 percent. Currently, we're at 85% of budget, which is basically the same as last year. And I made it through the report. Sorry. <laughs> the water? Excuse I'm sneezing. Pass this water, water down to our controller. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I spoke it all. Thank you. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. Do we have any questions? Can I have a motion to approve the financial? So report? moved. In a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Report is accepted. Madam Clerk. Approval of minutes, September 8, 2016, the workshop meeting. Uh, motion. Moved. In a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. September 15, 2016, the regular town board meeting. May I have a motion? Moved. In a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are accepted. Items for board action. Item number one, adopting a negative declaration in the matter of rezoning application for 4225 and 4250 Culver Road. A motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Okay, I'll, um, we have two uh, resolutions upcoming that are for the same item. Um, the first will be a, a seeker resolution. The second will be a, a vote on the um, zoning application. And I'll just say uh, I want to thank the residents who have uh, uh, attended the hearing uh, last month, who have uh, emailed us, who have um, been thoughtful and uh, um, provided very valuable input in a civil way. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, it, we are a town that uh, has the um, unfortunate reality of, uh, of being largely built out. And um, in addition to that, we're a town that has a wonderful senior population, uh, many of whom I speak with, and wonder if they're going to be able to stay here with their grandchildren or if they're going to have to move to other towns where there are more readily available uh, senior uh, housing options for folks who are, uh, you know, ready to transition out of their uh, single-family home they lived, lived in for years. And it breaks my heart because I know they want to stay, but an alternative really isn't present right now. And when we went through the laborious process of passing our master plan uh, last year, um, the goal of that was to guide our future action. It's not a blueprint, but it's a, it's a statement of 
what does our town need and what do we possibly need to do to get there. And one of the most preeminent things in that master plan was a need for senior housing. And that was a no-brainer, but the master plan um, really provided credence to that notion. And we have before us a rezoning application that, um, you know, we, uh, we rezone for a purpose, but we know what the project, the intended project is. It's a senior housing project. And um, we have to balance the, uh, the impact versus the fulfillment of that uh, very, very uh, strategic and dire need to make sure that our seniors have uh, housing options. I, I will say, um, should we move forward with the, um, with the approval of the rezone, um, the, the uh, proposal, Providence will go to our planning board. And, you know, I, I don't want to absolve ourselves of the responsibility for approving it because it wouldn't go to the planning board if we weren't doing the rezone, at least at th this route the developer has chosen. However, I will say we view things more on a macro level. The planning, planning board reviews things very more, very carefully, and it is at that phase of the process that, um, you know, you will really get down to issues like parking, height. But what we're here as the board charged with is determining if this is appropriate to rezone, largely to fulfill a uh, very uh, uh, wide need in our town. And that's why I am confident in advancing this for a rezone. And I want to thank the residents. I also want to thank Providence for availing themselves, um, for answering concerns raised by residents, questions. Um, I'm proud of the process, too. I think we've been transparent. And, um, you know, there's been rezoning applications in town that haven't gone this way. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we were proactive in engaging residents and letting them know that this was a possibility and allowing them to uh, present their concerns or support to the board. And it has been both because I think you see um, the positive uh, ba balanced out with folks who uh, might have concerns, which they still will have a right to put forth uh, to the planning board. So with that, um, I uh, will uh, ask uh, our planning uh, and zoning administrator, uh, Carrie Ivers, for an explanation of uh, the uh, seeker. Uh, thank you, Supervisor. The proposed action involves a zoning map amendment change um, to rezone two separate parcels located at 4225 and 4250 Culver Road from R1 residential to R5 to allow for the construction of a senior housing development that consists of two separate buildings, one on each site. It's an unlisted action. Um, the proposed action is located in the town, one of the town's uh, primary north-south arterial roadways and it's characterized by uh, transition from residential development and neighborhoods to commercial and mixed-use buildings uh, to the north along the road. Um, in looking at the potential impacts associated with the project, we look at a, a range of uh, topics and issues, potential impacts to land use and community character. Um, as mentioned earlier, the, this, is, um, a, this rezoning is consistent with the direction and, and recommendations contained in the comprehensive master plan. It also addresses a need that was identified in the senior services study. Um, um, given that the parcels are located along a major arterial and given the sale, scale and setback um, and, and style of nearby buildings, um, we believe that the rezoning has a minimal impact on uh, community character and is consistent um, land use approach with other R5 zoning classifications throughout the town where they provide a transition between uh, commercial corridor areas and uh, nearby or neighboring residential development. Um, looking at potential impacts to traffic, although um, multifamily will allow um, more um, higher density development with multifamily buildings, the proposed uses for senior um, senior development, senior housing, and that is uh, historically um, associated with much lower traffic uh, generation in terms of trips during the peak hours and trips in general, and so the um, the impacts related to traffic are minimized by virtue of the kind of development that's being proposed there. Um, additionally, we looked at um, impact to utilities and energy use. Um, we're able to meet the needs. The development will not strain the town's uh, resources, community resources such as schools, little to no impact there. Um, potential impact to archaeological resources, as I've mentioned in other seeker proceedings, uh, much of the town is identified as an archaeological resource area. Um, however, be 
typically um, SHPO's response is that in areas that have been previously developed, there's very little chance that you're going to disturb archaeologically sensitive um, artifacts and that there's a protocol in place that if for some reason you came into contact with something that was archaeological in nature, there's a, a, a protocol that's taken, not expected here or expected to be a, um, a significant impact. In looking at the historic um, resources impact, the parcels are um, being rezoned. They're currently occupied by two church buildings, one of which is more than 50 years old. Um, however, the existing buildings are not on Irondequoit's list of locally designated landmarks. They're not on any state or national register of um, historic places. Um, in looking at the um, the applicants um, in the in the rezoning application, there was a letter from the state historic New York State Historic Preservation Office. Um, indicating that they had reviewed the application and determined that based on their review um, there was no historic properties that would be affected by the undertaking and the town took the further step of um, taking a look at the original application that was submitted to SHPO which is the shortened version of State Historic Preservation Office um, and the the application w materials that were submitted it was clear um, that the proposed project would call for the demolition of the two structures and that um, <coughs> the images provided of the structures were very clear and accurate depiction of, of the properties in question. So for all of those reasons and reviewing the, um, the environmental impacts, we're determining that there are no large adverse impacts associated with the rezoning and for that reason recommending a negative declaration. Uh. Thank you, Carrie. Will the planning board have the opportunity? Will the planning board conduct seeker as well? In this instance, we're the the uh, it's an un, what's known as an uncoordinated review, which means that each board that will make a decision will carry out their own seeker. Very good. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Resolution is adopted. Item number two, approving an application for rezoning of 4225 and 4250 Culver Road. May I have a motion? Motion. A second. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number three, authorizing the award of bid for baseball dugouts and a concession stand. Pull from agenda, please. Item number four, authorizing the award of bid for 2016 or newer compact articulated wheel loader plus optional attachments. Uh, motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the bid in front of the board this evening is to award uh, the low bidder, um, Admar uh, Supply Company, uh, for the low bid with regard to the small articulating wheel loader, also known as the Wacker. Um, this uh, device is a small compact loader which uh, will serve within our parks and recreation um, uh, over at Camp Eastman and then during the winter months um, uh, double as our sidewalk plow. Uh, so with the continued uh, support from the board and investments in equipment, um, you know, we're, we're very excited to be able to continue to get uh, during the snow and ice season, which our department's very much preparing for at this time, uh, able to open up a, a, another sidewalk route uh, for plowing. Um, just two years ago at four routes, now at five, soon to be six. So uh, the total amount of this bid is $73,733. And again, to Admar um, Supply Company. Okay. Thank you, Bob. And I'm just going to uh, offer an amendment. Um, adding uh, after in the now the, the last section uh, please add the amount um, the words after bid first line in the amount of seventy three thousand seven hundred thirty three dollars because the whereas clauses are not binding we need to resolve the actual cost of the equipment did I say that correctly thank you um, any questions or comments for mr. Kiley hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Resolution is adopted. Item number five, authorizing the entering into a lease amendment for the cell tower located at McAvoy Park. Motion. Moved. And a second. 
Second. Thank you. As you might recall, uh, earlier this year we uh, passed home rule res legislation, um, home rule resolution authorizing the state legislature to uh, retroactively alienate parkland at McAvoy Park. There has been a, a cell tower there for a number of years. Uh, the town has entered into a lease with the with the company. Um, we retroactively authorized the alienation of that parkland. Um, it was brought to our attention when the uh, cell phone. Uh, company, the user of the tower, uh, proposed an amendment to the contract. Uh, now that we have uh, alienated the parkland, we advanced this uh, lease amendment. And I will, I will say that um, we have reviewed it and uh, it's, it's uh, acceptable. There are some provisions that allow us to adjust uh, should future uh, uses change. So I think that reflects some concern raised by the board. And um, I'm comfortable advancing this. Um, any questions or comments? No, I agree. I, I'm I appreciate the staff taking the time and looking it all through, and I, I think it's a, it's a much better pro, um, a proposal. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number six, dedicating the Arundaquite Youth Ballpark Complex as town parkland. May I have a motion? Move. A second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. I'll note, I forgot, I failed to mention um, in the previous uh, resolution, uh, the, state, the state law required us to um, have, a, have a parity as far as if we're alienating parkland, we need to create parkland of an equal or greater value. And we've done that through the creation of our new uh, ball fields in this resolution. Uh, dedicates them as official town parkland. And I'll also note the resolution does as we uh, uh, formalizes our dedication from last month, uh, naming the fields in the memory of three individuals, Gilbert J. Morelli, Sr., Frank S. Burgess, Sr., and Hank Schraba. Um, so this, in effect, formalizes our nice uh, ceremony last month with the, with the Little League and the kids and everything. So any questions or comments? Nope. And I will, again, uh, thank um, Majority Leader Morelli uh, and uh, Senator Funky for their efforts to uh, move that forward, as well as our previous Supervisor Bellow for spearheading this, as well as all town staff. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number seven, authorizing the supervisor to enter into a contract for town hall campus water coolers. Motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Commissioner Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution before the board this evening is to authorize the supervisor to enter into a contract with Quench, the lowest quote uh, for water service, uh, water cooler services throughout the town. Um, our Department of Public Works, our Police Department, and our Community Center. Uh, the term of this agreement would be for uh, 24 months, so two years from um, the day that we uh, execute this contract. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number eight, calling for a public hearing on the matter of extending the Consolidated Sanitary Sewer District to include 512 List Avenue. Motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wayne and Mr. Kiley. Explanation? Uh, the resolution uh, before the board at this time is uh, calling for a public hearing that will be held next month. Um, this public hearing is a formality when a new property seeks to enter into uh, and join, uh, connect to the Consolidated Sewer District uh, along List Avenue. Uh, the, the home residing at 512 List uh, has written an application requesting to enter into the Consolidated Sewer District uh, and as such uh, this resolution calls for the public hearing which will be held next month. I'll note that hearing will take place November 17th, 2016 at 735 in the Broderick Hearing Room at Town Hall. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, once Mr. Perticone gets back to his chair, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution <clears throat> is adopted. Item number nine, authorizing the updating of the 2016 local highway inventory listing. Uh, motion? Moved. Moved. And a second? Second. Mr. Kiley, an explanation, please. The local highway inventory is an inventory of all town roads throughout the town. The state of New York has recently, um, uh, statewide, began a, an effort to uh, more accurately uh, uh, record centerline miles. Uh, centerline miles are uh, the mechanism by which the state uh, 
passes down uh, state funding, specifically our capital highway improvement program dollars. And so during this and through this analysis, the state has found uh, errors and omissions um, in many different municipalities. Um, once the state of New York, and this is the State Department of Transportation, uh, became in contact with uh, the Department of Public Works here for the town of Irondequoit, um, we uh, uh, conducted our analysis and we found that the state had uh, several errors and omissions uh, for roads that are, uh, in fact, town roads. And as such, this resolution formally requests the state to update their local highway inventory to reflect actual field conditions here throughout the town of Irondequoit. Thank you, Bob, and thank you for uh, to yourself and the staff for uh, diligent work on this. Any questions or comments? Hear me none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Item number 10, authorizing the amendment of Town Board Resolutions 2016-065 and 2016-067 in regards to road length mileage on Dubalbeis Lane. Motion? Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Pertico. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, take a I'll explain this to Mr. Kiley, fill in any gaps I have. Uh, um, when we dedicated Dubal Vice Lane, we went through a very uh, lengthy process with the state of New York and internally, and we dotted a lot of I's and crossed a lot of T's. Um, uh, we did have one error in the actual uh, number of lane miles, and uh, and all the work we did it was the one thing we did incorrectly. This is acknowledgement of that and a correction of the accurate uh, accurate uh, counting of those lane miles. Any questions or comments? Mr. Per Mr. Kiley? Uh, it's center line miles. Excuse me, center line. Close enough. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution <coughs> is adopted. Item number 11, authorizing new vendor contracts for youth and senior recreational programs for fall 2016. Motion? Moved. And a second. 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 Mr. Senton. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. These are uh, contracts that will cover recreational programming in both our senior and youth uh, for the second half of the fall season here. Thank you, Mr. Don. Uh, I'll note that the board had the opportunity to review these uh, contracts at our workshop last week. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 12, approving the town's participation in the New York State Department of Health's Health Commerce site. Motion? Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sinton. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the New York State Office for the Aging has launched a new statewide online tracking system to gather information on seniors that utilize various services, many of which are part of our senior programming. Um, this is a, a contract that allows us to participate in that database. Thank you, Don. Any questions or comments for the Deputy Commissioner? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 13, authorizing a transfer from the highway fund balance to Route 590 Capital Project Fund. May I have a motion? Move. And a second. Second. To ensure that our comptroller has a voice through the duration of our budget process, I'm going to explain uh, the next three resolutions. Uh, this involves uh, really closing the, uh, the books on a lengthy process that we've had to rectify our uh, our um, 590 project, which became uh, Seabreeze Drive several years ago, uh, we worked diligently to uh, uh, basically recoup money. We were over from the state of New York. Um, uh, this is a loan from the general, from excuse me, from fund balance that will complete that uh, accounting. It's it's interest interest, if I'm not mistaken, that accrued. Uh, yes, okay. it was unreimbursable costs. Thank you, Unre uh, thank you, Madam Comptroller. Unreimbursable costs that accrued over the course of really a decade. So it's good news in the sense that we're closing the books, um, but we do have to make an appropriation to do so. We did get a bulk of the money back, though, thankfully. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. And I just want to acknowledge our former uh, commissioner, uh, Pat Meredith, who now is with State DOT, for his assistance with that. I know he's watching somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Clerk. Aye. Item number 14, authorizing a transfer from the general fund balance to the Information Technology Department to fund the IT infrastructure upgrade project. Motion. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Pertico. And I'll note this is a, uh, an appropriation uh, loan from our uh, fund balance to pay for significant excuse me, a, trans a transfer, not a loan, a transfer from our fund balance to make significant and thorough upgrades to our town's um, 
IT infrastructure, um, which regrettably has been uh, uh, lagging over the years and has not been updated in several years. And uh, we do we do this knowing that we'll, it, when it will increase output at Town Hall. Um, it really is a barrier that we have to overcome often. And I want to thank our, uh, our Rashad Atkins from our IT department for his diligent work. Um, to uh, and we'll have a resolution upcoming to um, uh, to uh, basically purchase the uh, the items, but this uh, appropriates the money from fund balance. But I feel it's necessary. We are in. I'm acknowledging we're accelerating what was a three-year plan. I'd rather get it done now and be more productive, uh, knowing we have the the fund balance uh, available. Any questions or comments? Here we none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Resolution is adopted. Item number 15, authorizing a budget transfer from the contingency account to the planning department for reimbursement to Penfield for the local waterfront revitalization program expenses. A motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. I'll uh, explain this, and Ms. Ivers, please uh, correct me on any uh, inaccuracies. Uh, we, uh, with the town of Webster Penfield, we were collabor collaboratively uh, pursue funding from the state for the local waterfront revitalization program um, there was in order to to um, uh, to, to um, execute this uh, the town of Penfield took the lead uh, the town while we do receive money from the state of New York 20,000 for each town uh, the town of Penfield in taking lead did incur a, a cost and we agreed uh, with Webster and Penfield to share that cost in the amount of uh, 9147 $9,160.47, which will come from our contingency fund. Uh, Ms. Ivers, anything to add? Nope, that's about it. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 16, authorizing the promotions of four employees to motor equipment operators. Motion? Moved. And a second? Second. I will thank our... Uh, the the ladies and gentlemen sitting in the back, uh, when we do promotions, we want to make sure people uh, are, are, it's part of the last test that's staying around for the duration of the meeting. That's why we do them last. Uh, <laughs> but um, thank you for staying for the duration of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Kiley, an explanation of, for the four uh, proposed uh, promotions? Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'll start this off. Thank you. Um, there are um, four vacancies for motor equipment operators in the Bureau of Public Works. <laughs> Um, I was asked to post for those positions. I did according to the CSEA contract. Um, we did receive several qualified candidates, and um, I believe they were all interviewed by the Commissioner of Public Works. Thank you, Director Burnett. Um We had the opportunity to post for four vacant uh, funded positions within the Department of Public Works. Um, we've had uh, and had seven uh, tremendous uh, uh, candidates that applied. Um, uh, interviewing all candidates, we selected four um, uh, of our candidates for um, promotion tonight. Uh, so please allow me a little bit of time here just to go through uh, each one of these tremendous employees to give a little bit of background. Um, Dave Tierlink is an employee, um, uh, a current laborer within the Department of Public Works, uh, uh, an almost 10-year veteran uh, employee here within the town, a multifaceted uh, uh, an operator, uh, chronically working above and beyond um, his title as a, as a current laborer. Um, Dave tends to be able to float and, and really mix into many, many different crews uh, within the town. A, a very versatile employee, spending time with the tree crew um, and, and spending a lot of time in, in a variety of different uh, crews. So uh, Dave's a tremendous em employee and, and also Joe Halsey, a nine-year veteran employee currently a maintenance mechanic three. Um, Joe has spent time uh, working within the mechanics garage for years. Uh, before that on, on uh, various different crews as a laborer um, due to a retirement of another one of our tremendous employees, uh, uh, Dave Rumfola, uh, Joe Halsey has taken up uh, many duties within the, the yard, making sure our materials uh, that we uh, currently have in stock are clean and are not contaminated by any one of our employees unknowingly. Uh, so uh, Joe is is a is a, a really really good tremendous employee that we have here. Um, another 
eight-year veteran, Colby Giordano, uh, eight, eight to nine-year veteran. I'm forgetting. I'm not sure if it's quite. I think it's nine. I think it's nine-year. I don't want to cut you short. Colby's a, a, a very, very uh, dedicated employee here, works on a variety of, of crews and, and knows um, an ex a, a lot of different pieces of equipment. If he's on a backhoe, uh, if he's hauling for the day, very, very versatile. Um, and, and finally, for up for the consideration of promotion tonight, uh, Chris Amico um, it would be our, our, our final candidate. Uh, for promotion. Uh, Chris is uh, currently a laborer with five years experience here with the department and, and many years before that as summer help. Well, Chris, um, you know, it, it's, it's bittersweet to promote Chris, I, I'll be honest. We, we have uh, uh, one laborer that tends to always be able to come in no matter what the conditions are and that's Chris. And, and so losing him from, from our laborers list and promoting him to our, our motor equipment operators uh, and, our, and our folks with CDLs, we definitely lose a very uh, qualified laborer, but we gain a very, very dedicated and qualified motor equipment operator. So we did uh, have three other um, uh, uh, very good, tremendous employees that, that did uh, apply. And, and, and so these are the four at this time. If, if we had more positions, we certainly would, would uh, be able to promote those as well. But very, very good uh, uh, candidate group, and I'm very pleased to put, the f put forth uh, the names of Dave Tierlink, uh, Joe Halsey, Colby Giordano, and Chris Amico to the board tonight. Well said, Bob, and uh, thank you for um, uh, the explanation. And uh, uh, I'll just uh, uh, welcome you and congratulate you. And, uh, you know, this is a, a great department, and we always like seeing advancement within. And, um, you know, I, I've been very impressed in six months with the output of the uh, the department and the entire uh, town workforce. But um, we had a busy summer, and we did a terrific job. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Would the four gentlemen please stand up and be recognized? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice job. Item number 17, appointing an office clerk three in the planning and zoning department. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Ms. Kelly. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, yes, Lydia Shuren. Uh, Lydia, if you could just stand up. <laughs> Lydia um, will uh, will be starting with us in uh, just a couple of weeks um, uh, following her proposed appointment this evening. So uh, everyone, please uh, recognize Lydia. We're uh, really excited to uh, be working with her soon. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, it's, a, it's a busy uh, department. Uh, I'm glad you're aboard. We have a lot of work to do. And you would be busy your first day, I promise you. Any mm -hmm. other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Ms. Sherman, would you just stand up one more time and be recognized? <laughs> all right. Congratulations to all our new uh, our, our promotions and our new uh, hires. Item number 18, adopt a resolution to ratify the CSEA white-collar unit contract. Thank you. Uh, uh, my motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Uh, this is our uh, white-collar unit um, we had a bargaining team that included Jason Vinette, uh, Councilman Wainer, um, and uh, we thank the uh, bargaining unit, our white collar unit, for uh, uh, a good uh, dialogue. This uh, contract will extend through 2020, the end of 2020, and I'll note it was passed unanimously. Mr. Vinette, anything I left out? Um, I would just like to add um, thank you to Councilman Wainer and Deputy Commissioner of Public Works, Don Sinton, for your your work on this contract. Um, we got it done quickly and fairly. And thank you to the White Collar Unit as well. Thanks, Jason. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 19, authorizing the replacement of the corn network infrastructure in the town and the purchase of additional supplies and services. Uh, so this impl I have a motion. Moved. Moved. A second. second. Thank you. This implements uh, the uh, funding authorization made um, uh, earlier, and I'll let ask uh, Mr. Atkins for a brief explanation. Um, long story short, oh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, we have a number of uh, servers, staff machine, and um, software that's currently outdated, um, and this is an effort to bring all of those, um, all of that machinery up to the present, and also so forth the cutting edge. Um, this will allow for a better flow of business because the machines will be moving faster and so will the people on them. Um, 
in the background, there'll also be a lot less uh, energy consumption. The new machines are much more efficient, and the larger machines are considerably more efficient. Um, and uh, also, I believe we're getting the best bang for our buck with this equipment. Thanks, Rashad, and thanks for your uh, diligent work on this. And uh, uh, procurement is a process we follow thoroughly, and rightfully so. And I uh, just thank you for um, uh, going through that process very diligently. And I'm going to add one amendment, which I'll pass down to the uh, uh, clerk, um, in the first, uh, be it resolved line, uh, after the uh, the cost, um, please add from in Info Advantage, who is the vendor. Okay, I'll pass that down to the clerk. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. <coughs> Item number 20, accepting the gift of two Fluke 59 Max thermometers from Tuxedo K-9 Training Camp, Inc., to be used by the Arundaquai Police Department. Motion. Move. And a second. Second. Uh, Sergeant Laird, explanation. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. These devices were donated as a result of a call for service a few months ago where a dog was locked in a vehicle and the officer had concerns as how to act properly. Um, as a result, Tuxedo K-9 provided two 59 max thermometers to the department. Because of this uh, acquisition of the devices, our officers will be able to obtain exact temperatures in the vehicle and take the necessary actions for the safety and well-being of any of the animals that we happen to find in vehicles that are locked. This will also allow for necessary documentation for further actions by the Ironicoi Police Department and or the Animal Control. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments? This is a good resolution. Hearing no, none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 21, approving the special event license for St. Kettery Parish Pilgrimage Walk to Saint Sacred Heart Cathedral. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 22, rejecting all bids received for the Arundaquai baseball dugouts and a concession stand. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. I'll explain this in a... Commissioner Kiley can um, add anything he feels necessary. Uh, we have committed to uh, uh, the second phase, the final phase of the uh, ball fields in back of downtown, uh, excuse me, in back of town hall. And um, we did put this out to bid. It came in slightly uh, above what we had anticipated. Uh, we've made the decision. We, um, we don't have funds to make up the difference this year. We will amend our, I plan on amending and advancing an amendment in the forthcoming months to our capital improvement plan that will allow us to put this out to bid, and we don't expect there to be a big difference. And uh, I, I hope fully anticipate we will have dugouts and concession stands um, in the first half of uh, 2017. So um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the work done uh, in 2016, but it won't be a lengthy project. Mr. Kiley, anything to add? Uh, at this time, um, you know, I, I, I feel that the bids came in. We did have um, a fairly good uh, a turnout, uh, seven different bidders bid on this project. Um, at this time, it's my opinion that I think the, the market is a little saturated right now with um, other um, construction projects and, and as such that's why I think the, the bids came in a bit higher so we will be uh, looking to, to recharge and reload this project um, in the spring of 2017 for construction um, in the early uh, early summer hopefully of 2008 uh, 2017 in the April uh, May and June time frame thanks Bob you still have to work on the sidewalks though in front of Titus okay I know that's keeping you busy. Absolutely, yes. yes. The Thanks. wall is going up slowly, but Thanks, surely. Commissioner. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Uh, this concludes our body of work for this evening. I will note that our, we have a special town board meeting November 3rd, 2016 at 4 p.m. that will uh, accept, uh, pass the Ten. temporary budget. Is that correct, Annie? Ten. Preliminary. Preliminary budget. I'll get the nomenclature by the end of the process. Uh, our next workshop is November 10th at 4 p.m. Uh, that will be followed by a public hearing on the budget at 7.35 p.m. sharp. Our next regular town board meeting will take place November 17th, 2016, 7 p.m. in the Broderick meeting room. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. And a second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.
We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Arondequoit Town Board on ICAT 12, Arondequoit's government access channel.